the growth of the steel industry since 1877. From a line of steam engines introduced at that time to mammoth adjustable blade axial compressors for blast furnace duty to computer controlled mill drives. Alice Chalmers products and processes have made important contributions to steel making profitability. Most significant of these is the great kill system for pelletizing iron ore. More than 23 great kill lines are now operating or under construction around the world. They have a combined annual capacity of 36 million tons. Behind the broad line of products and services is Alice Chalmers' unique combination of experienced staff of engineering specialists and metallurgists. A renowned research facility that tests ores and metals to improve or develop completely new processing techniques a newly modernized manufacturing facility. Now, Alice Chalmers expands its ability to serve steel producers with an important new offering, continuous, continuous casting. The new system is manufactured and marketed by Chalmers under special agreement with its designers, Vos of Linz, Austria. One of Europe's leading steel makers, Vost enjoys stature both as a steel plant operator and as an equipment builder. Boast employs about 20,000 people working in various plants, such as the coke oven plant, five blast furnaces, two steel plants, the rolling mill. This is the firm that joins Alice Chalmers in bringing you the continuous, continuous casting system. At the Vost facility in Austria, the continuous casting plant was designed, built, and put into operation. The plant is of low profile and can be installed in existing buildings of most steel companies. The plant utilizes a straight mold followed by a six and a half foot long straight strand, which then begins to curve. This method combines the less expensive construction of the curved plant with the metallurgical advantages of vertical plants in an ideal manner. The plant consists of the following parts. A ladle support with fork type arms for receiving the steel ladles. Two ton dishes which permit an uninterrupted or flying exchange during casting. A straight mold. A strand bending unit. A casting bowl. The last three named parts can be easily replaced as a whole. They are followed by withdrawal and straightening rolls with drive and universal joint spindles. A torch cutting machine. Roller tables, which are split up into several sections. And the dummy bar lifting device. Prior to each casting, the dummy bar of the cold strand is newly prepared. Rail heads are inserted to connect the cold and the hot strand. When casting begins, the cold strand is moved in. In the casting bow, the dummy bar is guided by the supporting rollers. The dummy head is fixed to the cold strand so that it can move laterally and is introduced into the mold by means of two centering cylinders. Meanwhile, on the casting platform, the machine is prepared for the casting. The dummy head, which has been moved in, 
is sealed by cords and small scraps. The immersed nozzle and the stopper are placed in the tun dish. Tundish and the immersed nozzle are then preheated to about 1,000 degrees centigrade by means of special burners. After adjustment of the cooling water quantities, the machine is ready for operation. Primary cooling water is pumped through the mold in an enclosed circuit. A standby water tank is provided to permit emptying the mold in case of cooling system power failure. Secondary cooling water is taken from the plant service water network and supplied to the secondary cooling zones by means of the pump station and an automatic regulating station. On the vessel platform, the temperature in the vessel is continuously measured and the melting temperature of the heat is passed on to the continuous casting plant. the temperature is within the desired range, the heat is tapped. By means of an overhead crane, the ladle is conveyed to the continuous casting plant, again measured. is deposited by the crane on one of the two fork type arms of the ladle support. Then the preheat burners for the tun dish and immersed nozzle are removed. The preheated tun dish and the ladle are swung into casting position. All the movements of the tun dish and the ladle are carried out by means of hydraulic cylinders. First, the tun dish is charged by opening the ladle stopper. As soon as the desired bath level has been reached in the tun dish, the tun dish stopper is opened. Steel flows through the immersed tundish nozzle into the mold. There it solidifies due to the cooling effect of the small scrap and the rail heads of the dummy head. Thus the steel is rigidly connected with the cold strand. When the desired casting level in the mold has been reached, the withdrawal and straightening rolls are started. Simultaneously, the secondary cooling system and the oscillating drive are put into operation. The slab, still liquid in its interior, is conveyed from the straight part to the casting bowl. In the casting bowl, the strand shell is supported by rollers in the same way as it had been in the strand bending device. Between the rollers, Secondary cooling water is sprayed onto the strand surface by flat spray nozzles. The withdrawal and straightening rolls are designed not only for withdrawing the strand, but also for reducing it, if required. A 
torch cutter following the withdrawal and straightening roll separates cold and hot strands. The strand lifting device removes the cold strand from the roller table. Afterwards, the cold strand is prepared for another casting. The rollers of the cutting table are lowered during the cutting procedure to protect them from damage by the torch cutter. The torch cuts the hot strand into the desired slab length. This is pre-selected on a length adjusting device. The ladle is emptied in 30 to 40 minutes depending on the casting speed and on the size of the slabs. The ladle support and the two ton dishes are designed in such a way that their flying or uninterrupted exchange can be carried out during casting. This contributes immeasurably to the economy of the process. Before the first ladle has been emptied, the second ladle is in the ready position. It is brought into casting position as soon as the first ladle has been swung out. As a result, casting is completely continuous without any interruption. avoid interruptions for replacing the refractory linings of the tundish and the immersed nozzle, a flying exchange of the tundish is also provided. As soon as tundish number one has been charged, the ladle is swung to the second tundish which has been preheated in the meantime and charges it with steel. After the first ton dish has been emptied, the second is swung into casting position and casting can be continued without interruption. their quality, sample steel slabs or billets can be provided to the customer for rolling in his own mill. Operators for the continuous casting plant can be trained by Boast in Austria or in the customer's own plant. In summary, the operating advantages of continuous continuous casting are many and behind each machine is the unique combination of capabilities and experience offered by Ellis Chalmers and Vost.